Hello and welcome to the sixth tutorial for EdPy. In this video we're going to be talking about reading values out of Edison sensors and getting Edison to react to things in the environment inside your code. In EdPy the way to do this is all of these ed.read functions. Now there is a lot of ed.read functions as you can see down here. So we're going to go through these one by one and kind of talk a little bit about what they are and what they do and how I've got them set up. So for the first couple, I've got them set up in a little while loop with a pass, as we saw in the last video. Now, this is basically setting this up to be a wait. So this is basically waiting while Edison obstacle detection is seeing no obstacle, which basically means that this whole thing sits here and waits until Edison sees any obstacle at all, and then it will move on with the rest of the code. So for the read obstacle detection, you of course need the obstacle detection to be on, which is what this first line of code up the top here is. That's turning on the obstacle detection beam so that Edison can actually detect obstacles. If you don't turn the obstacle detection beam on, this type of loop will never get passed because it is always going to say, oh, uh, there is no obstacle because it's not trying to see any obstacles. Uh, going on from that, as you can see in the comments here, there are a couple of other different options that you can use for this equal sign up here, and changing these around will change what Edison is looking for in the little wait here. Similarly, we've got read keypad, so this is looking at the triangle button or the round button. Once again, this loop, because it is while the keypad is not equal to the triangle button, this is going to loop around until such time as you hit the triangle button, then it is going to move on with the rest of the code. Uh, further down we have the clap sensor, uh, so this can be used to detect loud sounds around Edison. Once again this is equal to not clap not detected which means it's going to loop around while there's no clap and once there is a clap it's going to break out and move on down to the next thing and as you can see down here there is also a clap detected so you can uh, change this around as you see fit. Further on down we have ed.readLineState. Now readLineState basically just looks at the surface below you and says that is either a high reflective surface or a low reflective surface, i.e. Edison is on a white surface or Edison is on a black surface. Now to do this one you need to have the line tracker LED turned on. When the line tracker LED is turned on Edison takes a reading and says this value here is a white surface. So you need to make sure that Edison starts on a white surface when this ed.linetracker LED gets turned on for the first time. Then further down here, uh, we now need to turn the obstacle detection beam off for these next couple because we're going to start looking at the remote control codes and the IR data. Now both of these use the same pieces of circuitry as the obstacle detection beam. So the obstacle detection needs to be turned off so that you can read remote control codes or IR data. So this uh, little loop here is going to continue around until such time as remote code number five has been received and then it's gonna move on. So your options here are all of the remote codes from zero to seven. So there's a whole bunch of remote codes in there that you can have a look at. Now, the next lot of these, I haven't set these up in loops because these don't return values the same way these things do. So ed.readIRData will return the value of the IR data that's being sent from another Edison. Uh, which means that, say you're sitting here looking at this thing and somebody sends a 10 over from another Edison, ed.readIRData is going to give you back a 10. So you can do that, do different things with that. Next up we have all of these read light levels. Now reading light levels basically gives you a number between 0 and 32,000 that represents how bright a light is being shined on either the left light level, the right light level, or the line tracker. So you can actually have a look at the line tracker value as a raw value and you can make your own calculations with that if you don't want to use the on white or on black system in the read line state. Uh, further down we have some kind of internal ones. Uh, so read countdown is to do with the internal countdown timer which you can set up using the ed.set countdown timer. Basically this is a countdown timer that runs in the background which means that you can do other things for a certain period of time. Then we've got ed.readmusic, see the video on uh, tune strings to see how this one works. We've also got ed.readdriveload and read distance. So these are to do with driving. ed.readdriveload tells you whether or not uh, the wheels have stopped moving and ed.readdistance tell you, tells you how many ticks you have left. 
before the drive uh, stops moving. So there you go, that is all of the read functions that you can use with Edison. Once again, see the help text on the side here for more detailed explanation on all of these things. Hope you've enjoyed that one and we'll see you in the next video.